Switch on a random episode of the Zoe Deschanel-led 2010 sitcom New Girl, and more likely than not, you'll come into contact with some absurd hijinks or tomfoolery. This show is very often very silly. You gave me a cookie, gave you cookie. Gave me cookie, guy, you cookie. You gave me cookie, I got you cookie, man! But maybe just as often, it isn't. And in today's video, I want to demonstrate that while New Girl's humour is often cited as its best characteristic, we'd do well to praise the show for another quality too, and that is its emotional maturity. This channel's all about taking pop culture seriously, and digging up meaning from less critically respected places, be that cartoons, comic book characters, video games, or sitcoms. And New Girl's full of great opportunities for that sort of thing, so much so that I'm regretting leaving it so long to come back to the loft on this channel. But today I want to talk specifically about a pair of episodes towards the end of season 5, which, spoiler alert, show us the end of Jessica Day's relationship with her on-again, off-again Dr. Boyfriend Sam, because I think they're the perfect example of just how grown up and healthy this show can be. In this pair of episodes named Return to Sender and Wedding Eve, it's Sam's birthday, and an old friend from college shows up at his party. Jess is worried that they're too close. They look close. Oh, it's so good to see you. So good to see you. Way too close. <laughs> In response to this perceived threat, Jess starts acting up with PDA after PDA before she realizes that she's being childish and jealous. But plot twist, it turns out that Sam's old friend Diane is actually in love with him, and has been all along. But Sam didn't know, because her big confession of love ten years ago was never delivered. Jess finds out all this, and takes the decision to tell Sam everything, reasoning that if she is meant to be with Sam, then he'll choose her over Diane. And initially, it seems this big selfless Jessica Day move works out in a classic sitcom happy ending, with Sam choosing her over his past flame. But cut to the end of the next episode, and it turns out that the happy ending didn't stick, that Sam realised Diane was the right choice for him, and that he was in love with her. Jess had spent this episode avoiding Sam, because due to a wacky misunderstanding, she was convinced that he was about to propose, and for some reason she couldn't put her finger on, she didn't want that. But at the end of this episode, Sam figures it out. Just out of curiosity, Jess, why couldn't you marry me? Oh, I don't know. You know. No, I, I don't know. What, what is it? It's Nick. Oh yeah, Nick is Jess's ex-boyfriend, current best friend and roommate. Should have mentioned that up top, my bad. Nick and Sam never really got on, in large part due to a shared dislike caused by a shared jealousy. Both times Jess and Sam dated, Sam felt threatened by Nick's closeness with Jess. And this whole time, on some deep down level, it is fairly clear that Nick's into his roommate. But as for the point I want to make here, the reason I'm making this video, I want to argue that this pair of episodes displays a really clever bit of character work from the writers, taking the same sitcom staple paranoid jealous lover plot we've seen a million times before, and using that trope as a starting point to progress these characters' arcs in really mature ways. And this is most obvious when we're thinking about Sam. Personally, I never really liked him before this episode. I didn't like the way his insecurity about Nick made him act, and I don't think that was a particularly unpopular opinion. Before this point, Jess was the one caught in the middle of the jealousy and the machismo, as seen in episodes like Jeff Day. Hey, how you doing? I'm Jeff Day. My brother! Jeff with a G. Yeah, I came as soon as I could. I don't know why, I explicitly told you not to. But by reversing this dynamic, by having Jess insecure about a close female friend of Sam's, and acting out as a result, Sam is redeemed. Because Sam and Diane's bond is almost the same as Jess and Nick's. We're just seeing this same familiar dynamic from the outside for once. Faced with this reversal, a situation where she's effectively swapped places with Sam and now sees her partner sharing an impossibly close bond with another friend, Jess is confronted with how Sam had been feeling all along. This isn't a realisation she ever consciously makes herself, and Jess is often pretty clueless, so it's possible she misses this parallel entirely, but crucially, we don't. And the point isn't that jealousy is good. The show isn't affirming toxic emotions. 
It's more that, like Jess here, and like Sam in the past, sometimes you're not crazy for worrying, and sometimes you have to address the root of that insecurity head on. Now that Jess, our protagonist, is on the other end of it, we see just what a raw deal Sam got back in season 2. So when Sam leaves Jess an episode later, in a way he leaves the relationship, and indeed the show, forgiven, or at least understood, for stuff like this. Thank you. Thanks. Oh my god! I'm sorry, Nick, it's the training. He's in such terrible shape! We could have killed him! Like I said, the parallel here between Sam and Diane on the one hand, and Nick and herself on the other, initially eludes Jess. But when Sam drops the bombshell at this episode's close, we leave the character deep in thought and reflection. We're never shown any of the following explicitly, but I think in between this episode and the next, Jess realises what we've discussed above. That her bond with Nick is in some ways a mirror of Sam's with Diane. And if those two were secretly in love the whole time, then maybe she ought to re-examine her feelings for Nick and just why he stayed such a big part of her life, even when both of them have entered and exited other relationships. That maybe she ought to reflect on why she was so eager to give Sam the chance to get out of the relationship. Was it maturity, or was it self-sabotage? We don't know for sure, and neither does Jess, but the possibility is there, and I think that we're supposed to assume Jess realises this too. So, like Sam, Jess leaves this story better off, knowing herself more honestly, and all this happens as a result of the most formulaic, tropey setup in sitcom history, that whole jealousy thing. If you went back and looked at other sitcoms from the time, more conventional ones, you'd see a whole lot of examples of this trope being played straight. But New Girl goes against the grain, and uses this setup to push its characters out from a place of emotional insecurity and toward growth. Now granted, this is a fairly optimistic reading of the events of these episodes. You could very easily argue that this ending is a big old downer, and you wouldn't be wrong. But I think we're right to focus on the growth and development here, and I'll tell you why. All the other storylines in these episodes focus very similarly on growth and maturity, breaking out of flawed patterns and easy solutions to become a better version of yourself. The B story in Return to Sender sees Schmidt's absentee father changing and being there for his son, in a way he'd always failed at previously. In the next episode, Wedding Eve, Winston worries that he's come on too strong with his new girlfriend Allie, and wonders if he should play it cool, take the sentiment back. But Coach hits him with some facts. Why are you gonna ask me to help you play games with Allie, man? You don't want that. Be who you are. If you've seen the show, if you remember Coach's persona back in Season 3, you'll realise just how big a step this is for both of them. This pair of episodes even opens by explicitly foregrounding the idea of growth. Wow, you didn't have to do that. Did you say bird day? You heard me. Well, you know, I figure it just likes you, so I like you too, man. Welcome to the family. Given this background of self-improvement and maturity, I think this pair of episodes invites us to view Jess and Sam's breakup optimistically. And as we've seen above, there's a lot of ways to do so. New Girl isn't always the most emotionally mature show in the world, just look at the pretty contrived way Nick and Jess break up, but when the writers shoot for realism and honesty like they do here, it works pretty well. That's it for now though, I think. This one's a bit of a quickie that I threw together after realising I wouldn't be able to get the April Community video done in time, but I hope it suffices for now. And hopefully it won't be another four months before I talk New Girl again. So thanks for watching, and a special thank you to my patrons on screen now. Especially Kevin Douglas and Ian Fifield.